Okay, what's up my dudes? You know, I uh, got another episode. This is gonna be the how to change a E30 radiator. I know you guys are excited. I'm upgrading to a bigger radiator. It's from a Z3M. I got it from FCP URL. I'll put all that links in the description and all that good stuff. It's a great upgrade for any of you looking to get more cooling capacity out of your E30. If you're overheating or things like that. There's a lot of important steps and after you've actually replaced the radiator, another really important thing is to go and bleed the system. I have an entire video on a good solid way and a even more intense way to bleed the system on an E30. So you go check that out after this video is done. Let's get started. Okay, this is my intercooler. This is my radiator right here. This is the plug that you undo. You just do it with like a, a flathead screwdriver, something like that. And, that, and then you can just drain the coolant out of it from here. That's what I'll just do real quick. Oh my god! There we go. Alright, so now we need a 10 millimeter wrench. And I also have an 8 millimeter wrench here for later whenever we are bleeding the system. I'll just put that, you know, in the manifold. That's where I won't forget it. Just take the 10 mil. And all you have to do is remove that support there. Ugh. What I like to do is take the piece off, put it to the side, but I put the bolts that were in it back in it, just so I don't, you know, separate or get confused on what goes where. So now I've just returned with my handy dandy screwdriver to remove the little overflow chute that goes right here. Just loosen up this work pen. Oh, take it off. Nice and easy. I'll go ahead and do these two on the actual radiator, the radiator hose. Now, this would be a good time to go ahead and maybe do your cooling system or Come on. Replace your radiator pipes, slash replace your bands or your worm clamps, things like that. Just stick that off to the side. Okay, so we just got this lower hose clamp all the way to the bottom. Come on. That wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Just got all down my arm. Lower hose is off. Now I just have this uh, coolant temperature sensor thing to worry about. Just unplug that. This radiator. to the side, keep it in the case of emergency, these little pads go on, and that's it. Hmm. Interestingly, this seems to be actually shorter than the other one, but it won't affect the way it mounts because the mounts that actually support the word that go onto the chassis are right here. That's it, and that fell off, but don't worry too much. Now this is ready to go back in the car, along with the new fan clutch and things like that. Ugh. Radiator comes in just in front of the fan clutch. This is definitely a squeeze, and you don't want to ruin any of the fan blades or anything like that. So you just sort of gently wiggle it. Oh, I definitely hear a hose on the other side. So fast. Okay, 
So now you've got the radiator in about this much, it's a good time to hook up the bottom hose on the radiator. So the radiator just rests on these pads on the bottom and then the bottom hose slips on just with a little bit of love. Push it all the way on. Then you just take the hose clamp and tighten it down. Easy as pie. Now you absolutely 100% want these hose clamps tight, but not crazy. And this one hose will go over to here. But before I do any of that, there's a trick that I like to do to make this whole bleeding process easier. So what I will do is I have all of that coolant from earlier. I will take off these hoses, starting with the lowest one. So this is on the thermostat right here. Take off the lowest one. I'll fill that up and that'll basically fill up the radiator and whatever is missing from the block until it starts coming out of like here or here or sometimes the overflow tank. And then I'll move to the second tallest one, do the same thing until the same thing happens. And then I'll move to this top one, same thing, and then attach it to this. Now I did this in detail in a bleeding video, it's like how to bleed your M20. So I'm not gonna go super into detail, I'll tell you what to do and the basics, but if you're having trouble still, I suggest you watch that video. I have this actual support piece that goes on right here that we took off in the very beginning. Now this just has to go back on. Okay, so we got just a little bleeder valve right here. And that needs to be loosened before we start filling anything up or else we're just gonna trap all the air in here and we're not gonna get anywhere. So I like to just pull it out about that much. And keep this close by so that whenever you're filling it up, you don't end up doing some disastrous stuff. Next, I'm gonna take off this. This is the hose that goes down to the bottom of the radiator. So this is probably the hose that I'm gonna to have to use to fill up all the way to the top of the radiator. So to fill the radiator, it's gonna be through this one right here. Now notice that this is basically the same height as the outlet of the radiator. So whenever I uh, have filled this up to as much as I need to fill it up, water will probably start coming out of the top of the radiator here. Just work that hose off. Now currently I'm using this Prestone cooler, which is pretty good stuff. It'll work on these motors, but the problem with this is if you mix it with like regular blue or green coolant, it will gum up something nasty. But this is aluminum safe and I've actually flushed it to the point where there's nothing left of the old coolant system in this. So this is the only thing in there and it's doing pretty well so far. But if you don't know what's in there, and you want to be safe, I would suggest just using the BMW coolant. What I'll do right now is just pour some of this into this coolant expansion tank, and that'll lead into all the other bullshit, and basically do the same thing, but it's not as perfect, so just gently pour it in here. Okay, so I'm getting some coming out of here. So now, what I'll do is now that I can actually work with this, I'm gonna pour it into that top one, like I planned to initially. Okay, so now there's water in that hose, I can just push it onto here. Okay, there we go, come on. So basically now what you've done is you've given yourself a really good platform 
to bleed the system from because you've minimized the amount of air trapped anywhere, in, whether it be in the head, in the radiator, or any of the tubes because you've made sure each tube was full when it was connected to the thermostat. And that'll make whenever you're bleeding it a lot simpler because you won't be bleeding out enormous amounts of air. You probably have whatever's left in the top of the radiator which will come out, which will be forced out into that overflow tank or the expansion tank. So that's pretty much it. It was a good, simple mod. I highly recommend it for anyone sort of looking to do budget cooling upgrade. I will sort of, I'll update as to how it's performing and how it's keeping the car cool with the big turbo on it and things like that. But that's it, you know, just hook up your thermostat connector on the side to make sure that your auxiliary fan will flip on. Just make sure everything is not touching, make sure all your hose clamps are tight, and make sure you bleed it properly, that's really important. I have a whole nother video on how to bleed it with a pump and everything if you're having a lot of trouble. But most of the time, just running it and revving it up and letting it reach idle temperature and cracking that bleed valve at, at an incline. So put it the front up on jacks, we'll do the job. Good luck guys, I hope you learned something. I hope it was interesting. Thanks for watching, peace out.